submitted Q2 FY24 earnings conference calls. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on the date of this call. These statements are not the guarantees of future performance and involves risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ram Kumar Shankar, Managing Director from Kemp Plus and Mar Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. On behalf of Kemp Plus and Mar Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to everyone joining us on our call today. On this call, we are joined by our CFO and Murlidharan, Dr. Krishna Kumar Rangachari, the Deputy Managing Director of the Custom Manufacturer Chemicals Division, and FGA, our Investor Relations Advisor. I hope everyone has had an opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation, which has been uploaded on the Stock Exchange website and on our company's website. In line with our earlier guidance, Q2 FY24 was relatively better as compared to Q1. While the top line was flat, EBITDA was back in the black during the quarter. We achieved an EBITDA of rupees 46 crores as compared to an EBITDA loss of rupees 35 crores in Q1. This was due to the bottoming out of PVC prices towards the end of June and the increase in prices in July and August. The domestic demand outlook for both suspension and specialty based PVC resin continues to be strong with a boom in the infrastructure and real estate sectors. However, the imports of both suspension and base PVC witnessed an increasing trend towards the end of Q2 with heavy arrivals from China. This trend has spilled over to Q3 as well, resulting in correction in prices in the early part of October. While PVC prices have started moving up again from end of October, the scale of drop in the early part of October will impact our margins in Q3. Based on our assessment, the recovery in the PVC business will be gradual over the next two or three quarters. Talking about our segmental performance during the quarter, on a sequential basis, our specialty chemical segment witnessed a 4% uptick in volumes. Prices of paid PVC saw a marginal 4.5% increase in Q2 of FY24 on a sequential basis. Despite global cues of weakness in the end markets, the inquiries from potential customers of our custom manufactured chemicals division remain robust. To effectively address the growing demand, we continue to enhance our capabilities. Overall, this business is on track to achieve 20 to 25% growth during this year. With the recent signing of the third LOI with a global agrochemical innovator for an active ingredient, we have strong visibility with respect to steady state capacity utilization of the new production block and are on track to achieve the 1,000 crores revenues from this business in the next three to four years. Phase one of the new multipurpose block which we inaugurated in Q2 of this year, has been commissioned and is being ramped up. Deliveries of the two molecules for which LOIs have been signed in the recent past will com commence from the second half of this year. The chemical industry is experiencing a phase of broad-based weakness globally. On a sequential basis, our other chemicals comprising of caustic soda, chloromethane, hydrogen peroxide, and refrigerant gases, posted a flat performance in terms of revenues despite an 8% increase in volumes. Prices of both caustic soda and chloromethane witnessed further correction in the second quarter compared to the first quarter. There are some initial signs of recovery in prices and we expect normalcy to restore in the next two to three quarters. 
On the suspension PVC side, we observed a similar trend in terms of pricing as witnessed in base PVC. The overall demand, however, continues to be strong. Coming to our expansion projects, both our projects are on track. Completion of phase two of the multipurpose block is anticipated by the end of financial year 24. And the phase PVC capacity expansion by 41,000 tons will be commissioned in Q3 of FY24. I'm happy to report that our Karikal plant and two of our plants at NATO have received the prestigious Soul of Honor Award from the British Safety Council. Another plant at NATO and a Karlu plant have already received this award in earlier years. While we continue to face headwinds in the near term, we expect a recovery over the next couple of quarters. The business prospects for our products continue to be strong in the medium to long term. With the projects on track for commissioning as per slated timelines, we are confident of delivering a healthy performance in the future. I will now request our CFO Mulidharan to share the financial highlights for the quarter and the first half of the year. Mulli? Thank you, Ramkumar, and a very good afternoon to all the participants on the call. Talking about the quarterly performance in the second quarter of FI24, the revenue from operations was flat on a few on few basis and showed at rupees 988 crores. Our gross margins, which dropped to near historic lows of 27% in the last quarter, showed a decent recovery to 34% in Q2 FI24. This was largely due to some improvement in prices of both suspension and pace PVC, coupled with lower feedstock prices during the quarter. Employee expenses during the quarter remained flat as compared to Q1. We, however, saw an 8% decline in other expenses sequentially, mainly due to a 10% reduction in energy costs during the quarter. Due to the above mentioned factors, we reported an EBITDA of rupees 46 crores as against an EBITDA loss of rupees 35 crores during Q1 FI24. Our finance cost for the quarter stood at 39 crores, and FAT for the quarter was at 26 crores. While the correction in prices, PVC prices in October 23 have reversed partially towards the end of the month, the scale of cor correction will impact the margins in Q3. For H2 FI24, we recorded a revenue from operations of 1,984 crores, EBITDA of 11 crores, and FAT loss of 38 crores. With the commissioning of phase one of the custom manufacturing project in Q2 and the expected commissioning of the phase PVC project in Q3 of this year, the volumes are expected to go up in the coming quarters. With respect to the balance sheet as on 30th September 2023, a consolidated net debt stood at rupees 321 crores. This is mainly due to the project loans drawn during H1 of FI 24 combined with a slightly lower cash balance. With this, I conclude the presentation and open the floor for further discussions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants requested to use handsets for asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Sanjay Jain from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, Ram and Morley. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, I got few of them. Uh, first on the PVC, uh, though India demand remains strong, I think globally, particularly China, uh, remains on the weak footing. How sure are we of a recovery until China real estate completely recovers? And it appears that that itself may take a few more quarters. Uh, so what gives us confidence of a sustainable spread in the PVC? Uh uh, good afternoon, Sandesh. And uh, afternoon, see, yeah, this, that is a very valid question. And uh, what we really need to have a stable margin and stable price level. Volatility is what is the problem. As we have discussed in past calls as well, so long as the prices are stable, uh, the margins would also tend to stabilize. 
because the feedstock VCM prices normally follow PVC pretty closely. Uh, it is only when prices keep yo-yoing that margins are affected because of the time lag between uh, uh, the drop or the correction in PVC prices and the correction in VCM prices. And the second, uh, uh, you know, uh, the second uh, uh, action that we are uh, as an industry are looking at is to file for anti-dumping and uh, to uh, have quantitative restrictions. So there are a variety of measures that we have asked for, and we are hopeful that some of them would come through. I think government has notified some quantitative measure, but I, it's, it's been taking a lot more time than what we would have anticipated for that to get implemented, right? That's right. That was uh, the BGPR has uh, notified the quantitative uh, measures, and uh, it normally has a certain process time, and that process time uh, will uh, take its course. Uh, but we are confident that uh, something will come through uh, soon. Got it. Uh, Ram, my question on the standalone still remains. It's a it's a fully integrated uh, 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 facility uh, based PVC, and uh, we have a a very good specialty chemical business. Right? I a bit a loss in that scenario because I don't think people are making losses in caustic and chloromethane. DCM Sri Ram is still making profit. That indicates that it, the profit cannot be in the Red uh, without uh, uh, paste PVC not doing so well. So what is dragging the performance for us in standalone and and an integrated facility itself means that it cannot go into a red, right? See the the prices of paste PVC are also uh, to some extent being influenced by the sentiments around suspension PVC. So while we saw the July August uh, uh, correction, uh, upward correction in prices for both suspension and base. Um, the subsequent uh, uh, slide in suspension PVC prices have impacted base PVC as well. So this is something that uh, you know, in times like these, when uh, you know the largest uh, uh, producer and consumer of PVC in the world, which is China, is going through some torment. This is the this is having an impact on the region. It's not the world as a whole, and and that is really what is impacting us. If you look at just the standalone caustic alone, you know, uh, you sell the caustic and then uh, you look at the margins on just that, you may see that uh, that is looking uh, uh, very uh, good for that company. And depending on uh, the Chlorine margins are also the chlorine price is bad there. Maybe the chlorine is being sold at uh, negative price as well. But if you look at uh, for us, even for us uh, on a standalone basis, plastic is making money. It's just a question of uh, the rest of it coming together and the prices of PVC uh, actually settling down. And once that happens, I think we will be back to the normal, uh, you know, business as usual. No, Ron, I'm sticking to this again. Uh, we are not making any losses in suspension. Uh, I hope we are making profit in the specialty. You said we are making profit in caustic chloromethane. Then what explains the loss in the standalone business? It's also a question of timing, right? For us, the volume also will need to come in. In, uh, in, in a factory manufactured business, the volumes will come in towards the uh, second half of the year. So that will also start kicking in in the second half. So that, there are multiple things that are involved here. One is on the timing of sales in the custom manufacturer chemicals business. The second would be the volatility in base PVC prices. So it, 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 is, it is a mixture of all of this. Got it, sir. Uh, next on the uh, specialty chemical side, um, we said that agrochemical inquiries remain strong. Uh, how many products are we developing today? Uh, uh, and we also were uh, eyeing to expand our uh, presence in the pharma as well. Uh, where are we in that uh, journey? Okay. And this is uh, Krishna Kumar Andachari. So um, on the on the custom manufacturing, um, the inquiries on the pipeline is very strong um we uh, you know we have, in the past we have disclosed you know we have uh, 
existing eight number of products. This quarter, or since last quarter, we are in the process of commercializing uh, three more products. So that will take uh, our count of uh, existing products to 11. And uh, the pipeline remains uh, very strong and healthy uh, between agrochemical, uh, pharmaceutical, as well as uh, some other fine chemical inquiries. Uh, so we do have an active um, initiative underway to diversify beyond uh, agrochemical, and uh, you know we will uh, uh, keep updating you as we make progress on those developments. You know as they move through the through the pipeline. And how many products are Sorry. in the R and D stage? Uh, yeah, this is just the last one. This is just the last one. Yeah, so uh, that's what I meant on the in, in our pipeline. You know, the over fifteen are in the various stages of development. Fifteen products are in the various stages of development. Yes, got it. Uh, thanks, thanks all for answering my question and uh, best of luck for the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference, we request you to limit your questions to two per participant only. The next question is from the line of Tarang Agarwal from Old Bridge Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon. A couple of questions from my side, all relating to custom chemicals. You know, if you could give us a sense whether the molecules in question, uh, you know, the 11 products that you have currently, A plus 3, uh, while the customer is an innovator, uh, but are largely these molecules in the post-patent space or in the patent space? Okay. Uh, so it, it's a blend, it's a mix of um, uh, the final molecules um, of the 11, um, I, I, I would say it's a mix of uh, both uh, uh, both generic as well as uh, pipeline. Um, so that's about as much information I can give. Uh, but we, you know, the, the 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 three that we the three letter of intent that we announced over the past 12 months. Um, Two of them, uh, so for example, the first two, one of them is an intermediate that's going to a, a new molecule that has just recently been launched. The other intermediate was, is for an established generic active ingredient. And then the third LOI that we just announced um, earlier this week, um, that is going for a, that, that active itself is a new pipeline, uh, pipeline molecule. Okay, got it. And uh, you know, these customers of yours are they largely of Western origin, or uh, you know, you've got Eastern customers also? Um, they're all innovators, uh, uh, not of uh, I mean, ba uh, based out of uh, Europe and North America. Not uh, so we don't uh, we don't uh, sell anything in India. Okay. Got it. And uh, just uh, if I could, a uh, couple of them. Uh, you know, as you reach 4,500 uh, metric tons of capacity in Beregai, uh, what would be the total gross block for this business? And if you could give us a sense on what is the workforce uh, currently for this business? So the the, the 4,500 would depend on the the blend of products we have. It's an estimate. Which may change, um, you know, depending on um, on the complexity or the or the simplicity of the the molecules that we commercialize. So it's just a, a number based on an estimate of volume mix. Um, so that is, and that will be available only after the commissioning of the the phase two of the uh, the production block. That can, the you know the phase two of the the multi-purpose block. Um, that is under um, you know under various stages of uh, commissioning, and uh, the gross block of that will be 680 crores that we are investing now. And earlier we had uh, around 85 crores. 680 plus 85 that would be the total uh, gross gross block number for that uh, business. Okay, and uh, just wanted to understand the workforce uh, for this business. Yeah, so so the workforce is uh, at the site. It's all pretty much uh, chemists and engineers. Uh, today, you know, the, an approximate uh, approximate estimate would be close to around 400. 
um, of um, you know a, a combination of mostly uh, chemical mechanical engineers and uh, and chemists wonderful sir thank you that number will keep increasing as we bring in uh, um, you know at access to this commission uh, you know over the next six months thank you thank you the next question is from the line of jatin damania from swan investment managers please go ahead so thank you for the opportunity uh so i just i pardon me if i am repeating the question so just wanted to understand the such, average suspension and phase pvc spread in the last quarter and with the dumping that coming from the china and the pricing pressure that we are witnessing what are the current stats right now Yeah. Uh, sorry, could you repeat that, please? It wasn't very clear. I was just asking if you wanted to understand the spread, suspension, and the price pressure spread in the last quarter, Q2, and with the decline in the prices in the month of October because of the high import. What are the current spreads? Yeah. Uh, in Q2, the PVC we seen spread was around the two hundred dollars, ninety nine dollars to be precise. And uh, as far as the base PVC is concerned, it's an integrated facility, so we don't look at the spread. We look at the contribution that we make, uh, which is after considering variable conversion cost, packing cost, all of that. That was close to $200 uh, in uh, Q2 of uh, uh, FY24. As far as the current suspension PVC spreads are concerned, the Uh, CFR Asia price. I am talking about three duty numbers. CFR Asia price is around seven seventy dollars, and uh, CFR Asia VCM is around six hundred and fifteen. So three duty spread is around hundred and forty five dollars. Okay, so probably we can see some pressure in the Q three, but sequentially it was just higher. So one question on the uh, custom manufacturing front. now in the previous participant you indicated there will be that nine molecules were already there and you will be doing it three more during this year so these are largely into agrochem front so want to understand the intention of the management that going ahead are we going to diversify from the agrochem or we will be focusing on the agrochem only yeah this is krishna here yes the intent uh and uh, a lot of efforts are uh, being focused on diversifying uh, beyond uh, beyond agro we do have a significant presence in pharmaceutical right now and uh, you know if i look at what we have in the pipeline um, you know we have a healthy mix of uh, uh, non agrochemical uh, products under various stages of development as well Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side, and wishing the entire team a happy Diwali. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first, on the the PVC bit, uh, continuing with the earlier discussion, uh, if you can share, you know, your thoughts on the demand recovery in the global markets, uh, especially in uh, China, probably because of which it, you know things are getting dumped in India as well. Yeah. All right. See, China is definitely going through a slowdown right now. Uh, basically, China accounts for around the. Uh, you know it's it's around 40% of the world's uh, uh, capacity of pvc and maybe around 35 40% of the world's demand as well and a lot of the pvc in china goes towards the construction sector and as we all know uh, that construction sector which accounts for around 25% of the gdp is going through some tough times however that said uh, there is definitely a concerted effort by the chinese government Uh, to uh, uh, stimulate this industry because it does account for a source of their economy. There have been even as recently as September a lot of uh, stimulus measures that have been announced, uh, which are making it easier to buy property, etc. But it is expected that for that to translate into actual demand on the ground for PVC will take maybe a couple of quarters. So that is the period that we are looking at for some kind of a re uh, recovery and for these measures to translate down. now the the chinese futures prices uh, could be a good indicator of uh, forward indicator or a lead indicator of uh, what is happening in the industry uh, they were languishing at 5500 rmb uh, just about 6 8 months back they did 
uh, go up uh, to around 6,500, then they slump back down to 5,900. Right now they are at 6,200. So I think it is still better than earlier, but I believe that it will take that few months for the stimulus measures to actually uh, translate to demand for not just houses, but also PVC on the ground. Sure. And uh, w would it be fair to conclude then that, you know, till the time we do not see a recovery in China, China as a market, uh, these PVC spreads will remain volatile and hence it will have an implication on our spreads uh, per se as well. Okay. Till that time, I believe that uh, there will not be, there will be Chinese uh, the material that is available. But uh, what we are looking at is a reduction in volatility and the greater stability. As I keep saying, uh, stability is all that we want. It doesn't necessarily need to be at high levels. It can be even at lower levels of prices because since the feedstock also follows the PVC prices very closely, the margins would still be there even at the lower levels. So whether it is 1,000 of PVC and 800 of uh, uh, VCM or if it is 1,500 of PVC and 1,300 of VCM, we are really agnostic in that. So I think what we need is only stability, and I believe that if the bottom is reached and you have, as it increasingly looks like it has, then I think we will get to that stability, and that, that should be good enough for us. Also, the measures that Ram mentioned earlier in terms of the various measures the industry is looking at, uh, and in discussions with the government, those measures will also help support the price, go margins and prices going forward. If they start, as and when they start. Sure, sir. Uh, second question on the, the CSM side, uh, the LOIs that we have signed, the recent one as well as uh, the two earlier ones, uh, and the 15 or products which are a work in progress here, uh, uh, would you please help in terms of, you know, how complicated these products are, maybe, you know, single chemistry, multiple chemistry, how much, how many steps typically are required in these products? Yeah, sure. Yeah, the, the LOI on the, that we just recently announced, uh, it is an important milestone, and uh, uh, they're extremely pleased with the development. And it's important for many reasons. Uh, number one, it's our first active ingredient molecule that will be uh, that we will be commercializing. Uh, the second aspect is that uh, it's a new pipeline molecule uh, for the customer, and the fact that we are getting involved in the initial stages uh, means that there is a long runway for us to participate. And third, you know, the, uh, 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 as you asked, it's also um, a, a molecule with a large number of chemistry steps. And, uh, and what that means for us is it's a reflection of um, our customers' confidence in our ability to handle such complex chemistry. And uh, the other aspect that we like about this is uh, this will involve, you know, Kempla, Sanmar, and the customer extensively working over the next few months in in commercializing this. And so we like such partnerships where uh, uh, there is a significant involvement of our chemists and engineers uh, with their counterparts at the, at the customer uh, end. And lastly, I mean, the fact that it's an active ingredient, uh, you know, means that this is a validation of our stated intent of um, being only in the custom manufacturing space and not compete uh, with our customers. And so because of this, they, they trust us in the manufacture of the final product. So, you know, we are extremely excited about uh, about this particular opportunity. And so the other, I mean, you, you're asking the complexity of the industry. So what we have in the pipeline is as well a blend of uh, more complex chemistries um, and, you know, uh, a significant number of uh, new pipeline molecules. And uh, and then so, uh, you know, each, if when some of them materialize, um, uh, our belief is, you know, there is a long uh, runway for us to participate. Sure, so just one clarification for LOI 1 and 2, uh, the complexity is also similar or they are relatively limited, lower number of steps? Uh, so, a uh, little bit lower number of steps, but, you know, we talked about this in the past, uh, the LOI 1 was for a new, uh, the intermediate was is for a new um, uh, recently launched active ingredient by the customer, and uh, the LOI 2 is for an established, and the intermediate is for an established um, um, active ingredient. So, 
Uh, what we like about that, those two, is the fact that we have a blend of new and then the established means that, you know, the, um, the, the demand or the requirement is fairly well, uh, well established. So we, we like them for, the, for those respective reasons as well. But the complexity would be maybe, uh, you know, uh, would be lower than what it is, but, you know, still fairly complex chemistry. Fair enough. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you and uh, all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kirtan Mehta from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir, for giving the opportunity. One question, coming back onto the page, PVC business, you indicated that we had the contribution of around $200 in Q2 FY24. Could you, uh, what is the level of contribution we'll need to sort of have the specialty business back in black? You know, speciality business actually is a combination of products, not only paid CVC, uh, it's, it has paid CVC, custom manufacturing, uh, caustic soda, TMP, all of that mixed together. Uh, I think it's a unique set of circumstances that the caustic prices were also slightly soft and CMP prices were significantly soft. That is the reason you are seeing a uh, uh, lower profitability. But uh, if you, as you would see in terms of uh, the uh, current year numbers, if you look at only phase PVC increase, how much uh, should it increase? Maybe another uh, $200 increase in the phase uh, PVC contribution would certainly help. And how, what was the contribution for the phase PVC in the FY23? In FY23, 23 page CVC contribution. Okay. If I 23 was around $400. Fine, sir. Thank you. On that level, definitely simpler still be needed. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so, sir, my first question is on the CDM of business and uh, slightly wanted to get more texture uh, on the client side of it, the customer side of it. So, you know, what we observe is that, uh, you know, there is a very high dependence on the CDM or site on a single client, the European client. Uh, so, so as we move forward in the product pipeline, uh, will this concentration go down or most of the product pipeline also is with the same customer? Uh, Mr. Besta, yes, the, the concentration or the dependency on um, um, one or two customers will definitely go down as the pipeline moves. And which is why the milestone regarding uh, the commissioning of our new production block is very important. If you recall, um, prior to that, our existing facilities were completely occupied. Uh, but now what we have is an opportunity to take um, the available capacity and go um, have active discussions with um, a number of potential customers. But obviously, it will take time for the pipeline to move, and uh, and so that will, I mean, as I've discussed in the past, uh, that's typically a 12 to 18 month time period uh, from an inquiry and uh, then to commercialize. Uh, so the, the the near term dependency would be there, but medium term, long term, um, the, there will be a significant diversification of the customer base. Okay, okay. So even the three new LOIs, uh, you know, even with that coming into play, the customer dependency uh, will remain, right? That's a right way to think. Not, not very clear. Sorry, you are not even hear you clearly. Sir. So what I'm saying is that with the three new LOIs that we have got, uh, you know, will the customer dependency go down or that's like even, you know, even far off? Uh, then this three LOI coming into commercial production. So as I said, near term, it will continue to be the way it was, but medium and long term, uh, it will change uh, significantly because the, 
um, the, the, what we have uh, accomplished so far uh, is based on um, you know, the relationships that we already have in place. Um, but uh, the relationship will grow, with others will grow, uh, because now we have uh, demonstrated um, the availability of uh, uh, new production plants. Okay, got it. Uh, second question is that uh, on the custom manufacturing side, uh, you know, whenever we reach, you know, 1,000 crore, three, four years out, uh, so, do you think that the current nine molecules plus the three alloys will be sufficient to take us there, or we'll need, you know, more no molecules uh, to kind of fructify, uh, you know, how do how should we look at that? Yeah, I I, I think yeah, the, these what we have um, uh, what we have accomplished over the past uh, to uh, 14 months, uh, the three alloys. Uh, our thinking is. Um, the the steady state capacity um, of um, of including the new production block would probably get uh, fully utilized, and um, so you know so we would have to uh, start thinking about in the again in the medium and long term uh, what our uh, next set of plans would be uh, for uh, additional uh, new production capacity. Okay. And uh, sir, uh, another question is at a business level, at a company level, even if we reach 1,000 crore three, three, four years out, uh, we will still be significantly dependent on suspension and test PVC. So going forward, when things normalize, what are the typical ROVs that you guys look out for in this business? I think you had indicated that in custom uh, uh, manufacturing, we typically aspire to do 40% ROC. So what is that number on a normal market condition for the PVC business? Uh, it could actually keep, uh, it, it depends on the margins on a, an annual basis. For us to sort of uh, give one number, it's also a mixture of businesses. If you look at it as a combination of businesses, say PVC, custom manufacturing, cost recovery, all of that combined together, so uh, to do one uh, number would be a bit of a challenge. Okay, so let me put it differently. So across cycle, uh, you know, the PVC business, can it do 15-16% ROC? Is that a fair assumption to me? <laughs> that they should do. That is, that is to do. In case, just to give you a, a perspective, the Kinsma Sunmar business, uh, if you leave out leave out the uh, 22, 23, and the current uh, year, till then at least for the past seven years they've been com consistently doing a bit of margin of over 25 percent. So mm -hmm. that would certainly, given the capital employed, also these are plants which are built long back, and uh, obviously depreciated plants. Definitely, the return on capital employed will definitely be higher. Okay. Okay. So, so essentially. I'm sorry, sir, I missed you. No, no, this is an unusual uh, scenario. The last, over the last few quarters, so if you ignore these and look at the return on capital employed, uh, they have been doing quite, it has been doing quite well. Okay, got it. Thank you. That's it, Samantha. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Tiwari from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Hi there, good afternoon. Thanks for the opportunity. I have uh, two sets of questions, one for the suspension PVC business and one for the custom manufacturing. So taking up the suspension PVC part first, so I suppose the demand in this quarter, at least the domestic demand was fairly strong. Uh, it was at least 30% of YOI. So why is that like, you know, that our production or sales level is not uh, like, you know, close to the peak that it had did. So I suppose like, you know, if you look at peak volume, we are about 12% uh, lower than that peak. So, uh, and the reason I'm asking that is that while like you know prices could be lower, but certainly a higher production and sale could provide you the operating leverage. So why are we not uh, moving in that direction? That's uh, one. And related to that, uh, in the last call, uh, there was a data given out in terms of uh, how much Chinese imports are coming on a month-on-month -month, uh, monthly basis. So if you can if you can help with that data again, that what kind of imports in uh, volume terms have we seen from China in this? So that would be the first uh, question. Okay. In terms of the volume of imports from China on suspension PVC, 
I'll give you the numbers for the last three quarters itself. So in the January to March quarter, we had around 333,000 tons coming in from China. Between April and June, we had this drop down to 164. And July to September, it has moved up to 269. All right. There is a, uh, uh, imports coming in from China. The overall imports also obviously move in that line because China is a significant part of overall in, uh, imports. You were asking about suspension PVC production, right? Right. Actually, if you look at the half year, the suspension PVC production has actually gone up. Uh, uh, 165,000 tons in uh, the first half of this year as compared to 159,000 tons in the first half of last year. So, sir, I was referring to uh, the production that is seen in the second quarter of 22. It was about uh, 93,000 tons. Uh, right now, we are doing about 82,000 tons. So why are we not hitting hitting that peak production uh, levels right now? Right now, of course, I mean, if we can uh, hit 93,000, then why not? We, we wouldn't have done 93 of suspension because that's not a capacity. Our, uh, we did 77,600 tons in the second quarter of last year. The second quarter of this year, we've done 81,800 tons. All right, so I'll take it offline. Maybe like, you know, uh, that's it. Uh, that's something. Then secondly, like, you know, um, uh, on the on the custom manufacturing side, so um, you mentioned about the capacity of 4,500 tons and also, like, you know, the revenue target of 1,000 thousand crores. So um, where are we in terms of, like, you know, achievement of those multiples? If you can just give us some indicative number, I understand that we don't give out the custom manufacturing revenue on a quarterly basis. But I just wanted to understand that uh, in percentage terms, where are we uh, versus those milestones? And after the phase two of uh, custom manufacturing is commissioned, what will be our capacity in, at the regard? Yeah, uh, uh, talked about, uh, the, like I had mentioned, that we, uh, we don't want to give out the quarterly numbers. We do. We will certainly give the annual numbers for the custom manufacturing business. As far as the uh, the traction, like you had indicated earlier, we are on track to uh, sort of achieve 20 25 percent growth this year compared to the uh, last year. We are on well on track for that. Last year we indicated our turnover was somewhere around 325 crores. That gave an indication of where we'll end up this year uh, broadly. So that is how we can guide you today. And at the end of the year, obviously, we'll report the activities. Understood. Uh, and in terms of capacity? So the capacity is, is going to be linked to the capacity after we commission the phase two of the new production block. You know, we have indicated a, a total capacity for the entire site at around 4,500. And But that number is a notional number depending on and some assumptions related to uh, the product mix. Right? So that would change. Um, you know, the, the actual would be, um, you know, depending on um, which product we slot uh, from a campaign standpoint. But that would give you a reasonable indication of what the volume is. Right, right. So um, while uh, on the suspension PVC uh, national number, it's still I'm being on that number. So in the third quarter of 23, uh, again, we had done about 88,000 tons of uh, sales, right? Uh, so we are still not there. That's what I was trying to get at, that uh, if we are capable of that kind of sales, we're still lower than that, right? Even though the demand in domestic market is certainly higher. Now, now I understand. Because you were were you talking about production, so I gave you the production number. Sales right. actually depends. Sales depends on how much of stock is built up in the previous quarters, and therefore how much of stock is available in sales. So you right. look at that. Sales is entirely dependent on that. We, we will only have to look at the production, and then the have we sold all that we have produced, and are we right. producing to get off? So right now, in suspension business, we are operating at less than a day's inventory level. So whatever we are producing up to the last day of the quarter, we are selling. So, uh, you know, the sales difference between a particular quarter in the past and the current quarter would largely be because of stock uh, differences. You know, in that quarter, we would have drawn down some stock. So that might be... Right. Understood. So this, we are right now, we are holding just one day of inventory, is what you are saying. Less than one day of inventory. In fact, our, inv our one day production is around a little bit close to 1,000 tons, and our inventory is much less than that. 
understood. Thank you so much sir, for all the answers. I will get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arshad Joshi from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity and season's greetings to you all. Uh, so just one question uh, on the CSM business. Out of curiosity, in the uh, recent light of events with respect to the number of LOIs we have been able to garner, just wanted to uh, understand the process in the entire business development cycle. Uh, has this been uh, uh, due to our our existing forte in chemistries like cyanation, hydrogenation, or uh, these contracts that we have won are on the basis of our uh, long-standing relationship with the customer. Uh, and if suppose we have to take it to, uh, uh, in terms of our growth trajectory, if we are supposed to take it to some new innovators or new customers, uh, how would that how would that fructify into? Uh, so just wanted to kind of understand the, your thought process and the process in this entire business cycle. Yes, so the, so the way this works as I've indicated in the past uh, uh, to, um, to get a relationship going with one of the innovators or uh, with any innovator, you have to establish your ability to deliver what they want. So uh, the sequence of this is uh, typically, let's say they give uh, one call, one inquiry, um, they see how you deliver on that inquiry and that may be, a let's say, a 12 to 18 month mm -hmm. process on the complexity of their inquiry. If you execute, then the one becomes two, um, you know, the next set of inquiries will uh, flow in and, you know, so it just cascades um, um, in, the, in that manner, right? And so, um, you know, the fact that uh, we, we secured uh, three new molecules over the past 12 months was linked to the fact that, uh, you know, if you've if you have, if you have noticed our uh, communications in the past, you know, we commercialized, let's say, uh, two products the previous year or the previous 24 months. And so, you know, that's the way this, this builds uh, one after another. So that's pretty much the model. You have to establish uh, the trust. The, the belief on the customer part on your ability to deliver uh, what they want and you know one thing leads to another and it just keeps uh, keeps cascading uh, sure sir uh, so just a supplementary one to this uh, is it uh, more inquiry led or we are able to also find out certain gaps uh, let's say certain molecules going off patent and uh, we could have the ability to manufacture a few of them and then we take it to the customers or it's the other way around? It's the other way around because um, the, the second option is more like a needle in the hole that you have to, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a needle in a haystack or whatever. You have to keep uh, searching that, I mean, searching for um, an opportunity to participate uh, about which you, I mean, it, okay, it could be based on the chemistry capability you have, but um, the but invariably, the customer may not be interested in switching um, uh, to a new supplier. So, a um, lot of what we get is inquiry based, uh, based on the customer's understanding of um, uh, your chemistry capabilities and your uh, scale up capabilities. Got it, sir. Thank you. Thanks for the clarification and happy Diwali to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Meet Vora from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so I, I had just one question uh, regarding the quantitative restrictions in form of anti-dumping duty that had been levied in uh, May 2023. So, uh, you know, why is it that it is not playing out or is it playing out slow? Because we are still seeing large imports, say 270,000 tons in Q2. Now, is it that a lot of Chinese capacities have already been converted to less than 2 ppm of VCM content? Because today, as we speak, the restriction is on more than 2 ppm of VCM content. Because, uh, you know, quarterly uh, restriction on imports is around 20,000 tons for uh, China, Taiwan, US, and Russia. So, how do we look at it? The quantitative restrictions have not been brought into effect yet. They were, well, the final findings were notified by the DGPR. But they need to be deficit, and that uh, that is the final step. That is what we are waiting for. Sure, uh, but still, uh, you know, your thoughts on of the total imports? Do we see a large part of the Chinese capacities uh, which are getting imported in India less than two ppm, or these quantitative restrictions will put a lot of restriction on overall imports? 
because they are more than 2 ppm of pcm content the quantitative restrictions like you rightly said there is on all imports from anybody which is above 2 ppm there are some four countries mentioned uh, if it goes uh, above residual pcm content of 2 ppm then uh, there will uh, the restrictions will come into effect uh, but largely you, you are right it, it, it would possibly be applicable to a lot of the carbide pvc imports understood understood thank you sir that's all from me Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rohit Nagraj from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, custom molecules. Now uh, we have seen in the recent past that uh, there has been an inventory destocking uh, situation at the customers' end. Uh, however, uh, we have a very uh, strong uh, revenue guidance for this year from the agro. cmc molecules so is it uh, because of the uh, newer kind of molecules that we are i mean rather the early stage molecules uh, where we are supplying these intermediates and uh, this is backed by some firm uh, pos uh, from the customer uh, just your thoughts on this thank you uh, that, that's a good question now yeah it, it is uh, i mean it is indeed tough time from the on the on the atkem side there is the stocking going on at, uh, last quarter we also indicated that uh, we were also impacted by that uh, but um, our impact has been sort of compensated by uh, the fact that you know we have additional uh, molecules that we are commercializing you know uh, this quarter and uh, you know and, and selling both this quarter as well as next quarter uh, so Uh, so we we have been impacted, and it, um, what we hear is that uh, this particular issue uh, is probably going to be resolved, or in the process of being resolved, uh, demand uh, on the Atkin side uh, seems to be reversing, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Sure, got that. The uh, so second question is on the LOIs. So typically, uh, what would be the contract period for these LOIs? Maybe three to five years. And secondly, again, uh, in terms of uh, commitment, uh, is there a volume commitment here on a yearly basis? And generally, uh, where where are we in the uh, cycle? Uh, are we the first or second or supplier for these uh, con- uh, LOI molecules? Thank you. so the, the loi uh, the letter of intent um, uh, precedes a formal supply agreement so you know we are in the process of working on a um, or finalizing a supply agreement for each of the the loi that uh, you know we have been announced and typically the both the loi and supply agreement would be for a you know for a five year three to five year period uh with uh, some commitments on on volume um, and a price formula as well and um, so that you know that is uh, that is on the nature of uh, you know on the on the agreements that would uh, come in place now uh, with respect to you know are we the first or second supplier again in this business typically the customer would have um, you know just two or three suppliers not multiple suppliers and uh, what i can state is in each of these molecules uh, that we have announced uh, we would uh, be the major supplier sure sir got that uh, thanks a lot and best of luck sir thank you the next question is from the line of rohan gupta from novama please go ahead <clears throat> Hi sir, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, taking forward the previous question and uh, a little bit more clarification on this uh, in our CNC division, we have received the order and this LOI. Uh, sir, uh, what I understand that uh, this new AI is uh, basically is uh, still under the development from the customer, and uh, uh, over next five years uh, we have to we will be participating in the growth of growth of this product along with the customer, or we have taken. Uh, this order from some of the existing manufacturer which are already manufacturing for this company or this customer yeah so yeah this is a new um, active ingredient uh, that the customer is in the process of launching and um, so um, so our understanding is that uh, um, we would be the uh, the first one to uh, manufacture 
um, or the first supplier to manufacture, it's possible that the customer himself may be making some quantities of this uh, right now. Uh, but we would be the first uh, first supplier to uh, uh, to manufacture. So they're not switching from another supplier to us. And the second is yes, this is a new molecule, and uh, uh, so the there is a long uh, runway, uh, which may go well beyond five years. Uh, you know, um, as you may be aware, uh, some of these molecules, um, you know, um, last uh, much longer time. Um, in, in, because 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 they're patented and they're not genuine, so um, we would anticipate uh, that uh, you know we would participate in this uh, well beyond five years. And sir, so the nine products which we are already doing, I think that all of them are so far now intermediate, and this is the first in active ingredient. Uh, you're absolutely right. This is the first active ingredient. Okay, and just three to four more in pipeline. Any of them are in AI? Um, I, 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 um, I, I would uh, just wait till next quarter. I may be able to answer that better. But uh, uh, right now, no. Okay. I answered the uh, the nine products which we are doing uh, right now. Uh, in terms of the customer profile, so this AI which we are doing is the new set of customer, or from those our earlier existing set of customer only. That is one. And second. What kind of value addition which we could do bring for this product? I mean, because this product is a new product, uh, the development. So the technology or the product process is shared by the customer, and we are just going to be a contract manufacturer, or we have been uh, involved in journey of this product development for the customer, and uh, we have evolved this product either in terms of process or whatever the contribution. These are my two questions. Um, Sorry, the the first part of the question was, um, sir, the, the this is a new customer or it was a, from the existing nine products which we are already doing from those. Products. It's an existing customer because um, you know the, so, uh, so we have been working on this for almost uh, two to three years uh, from the inquiry stage standpoint. So it is a it is from our uh, you know from our existing basket of uh, uh, customers. And uh, uh, so we, uh, so in this particular case, you know, the customer actually has a, uh, a technology package that they have developed and, and that they have shared with us. So we will obviously spend some time in optimizing that further. But uh, uh, so the the chemistry and the package uh, was uh, given to us by uh, by the customer. So I guess I drill down a little bit deeper. So. I believe they must have been working with many other uh, suppliers for giving or sharing this technology. Any particular reason for we have been chosen? Either we bring any any cost advantage, or we have, or the product is related to the existing chemistries which we are doing, or we have uh, done some remarkable work earlier for the customer that has given us some advantage. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, could be multiple reasons. Um, you know, which I outlined earlier in the call um, so again the customer we know for sure that they uh, they work with um, a few suppliers by few i mean maybe two or three before they selected us uh, they obviously don't tell us exactly why they selected us but um, uh, our, our our thinking on this as i outlined before Yes, number one, you know, it's an active ingredient. So before they give an active ingredient to a supplier, uh, they need to be extremely comfortable uh, uh, with, the, with the supplier on many aspects. One, um, the custom, the supplier's um, ability to protect the intellectual property. Uh, the second is, you know, they don't want a supplier who may end up competing with them. So our catered intent uh, to not uh, you know, to not compete with our customers, you know, could have played a role. Uh, this is a fairly complex chemistry, so uh, this also means that they selected us because, you know, they were confident um, in the ability of our chemists and engineers to both develop this and scale this up. Uh, so all of these could uh, very well have been factors, uh, you know, that, uh, that played an important role uh, in their decision to um, to work with us, and 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 the fact that this is going to be a long-term relationship partnership, um, um, so uh, so I'm I'm sure uh, you know the, the customer is confident that our intent to be in this business 
you know, for the for the long term. Thank you, sir. That's it for me, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Rishabh Shah from the Lalan Rocha. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, am I audible? Yes, please. Yeah, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Most of my questions have been answered. Uh, I just want to know uh, your thoughts on the other chemical segment, which is caustic soda, chloromethanes, and hydrogen peroxide and refrigerant gases. As it has been mentioned that uh, uh, right now we are witnessing a pricing pressure in the uh, in this segment. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would like to know that uh, the, I would like to know that the uh, uh, I, I would like to know that the uh, capital, uh, are, we, are we doing the ca uh, capacity additions for these chemicals? Uh, see, in that, uh, Zoom. Okay. Uh, see, as far as the addition process is concerned, prices are pretty much stable. There is not so much of pressure there. Uh, if you look at uh, chloromethanes, uh, is, uh, is a family of uh, three products, and those are the ones, uh, in, or two out of those three are really facing the pressure. That is uh, chloroform and carbon tetrachloride. And the last one, carbon tetrachloride, is largely related to uh, certain pressure on agrochemicals in, in Latin America and therefore impacting the demand for our customers' products. But this is again expected to get better in the next uh, quarter or two. Uh, methylene dichloride is still strong, and uh, there is no pressure in methylene dichloride. But if you look at it as a basket of products, because these are all joint products, uh, there is pressure because of chloroform and carbon tetrachloride. Again, it is a question of a couple of quarters before we see the recovery. Uh, for caustic soda, actually, uh, there was a bit of a recovery in September, but then it again corrected a little bit uh, in October. Uh, in India, again, there is over over capacity on caustic soda, though the operating rates are not uh, so high. There is a little bit of balancing that's happening because of exports that are happening off the western coast of India by the producers on the western uh, part of the country. Uh, when that balance is there, then the prices do correct. But if you look at the medium to long term, there is a significant increase in capacity, in demand expected from uh, caustic soda because of the uh, the demand increased from the EV side, you know, because be it nickel mining or uh, uh, even uh, as various uh, uh, additives during the EV battery manufacturing process, you do need a lot of caustic soda. And uh, that is expected to drive demand going forward, apart from the usual uh, uh, demand uh, drivers like alumina, paper, and textiles. So we believe that the caustic story is quite intact. It is only a question of uh, a few quarters. Okay. As far as the R1 uh, expansion you were asking about, uh, no, we are not expanding on hydrogen peroxide or on uh, chloromethanes. Uh, uh, we are restoring some old capacity that we had temporarily mothballed in caustic soda. That will come up from, Jan uh, from January on this. Okay. And uh, for the estimated project capex uh, mentioned in the uh, investor presentation of about 744 crores, uh, what is the asset term and what will be the capex breakup? Can you please, can you please uh, have a view on this? There are two parts to the capex. Uh, one, uh, one is the uh, custom manufacturing business capex. Uh, where we have sort of indicated to an asset term of roughly around 1.3 uh, terms uh, on the customer manufacturing side. And as far as the, uh, that is around, uh, and the, as far as the uh, asset term on the other capex, which is the phase C business that is coming up, uh, that's around 360 crores of capex. There the asset term is uh, expected to be uh, roughly around uh, 1.2 times or so. Okay. So depending on the prices, uh, prices that they move, but roughly around 1.2 to 1.3 times. At, at current price levels, it's around 1.2 or so, but as prices improve, obviously, yeah. this will get better. Okay, okay. And uh, sorry to uh, ask this uh, question, but uh, I'm, uh, I just want to know what is the uh, variable cost in the uh, uh, operating expenses. Can you tell me what is the variable cost? How much percent is? Yeah, can, can we uh, actually variable cost consists of feedstock as well as other conversions also 
uh, it will keep varying with the change in fees of cost but it's a bit of a detail would it be okay to take this offline we can always connect with you offline and discuss the details okay okay thank you thank you very much thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that is the last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for the closing comments. Uh, thank you, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today on this earnings call. Uh, as always, we appreciate your interest uh, in Ken Plus. And if you have any further queries, do contact SGR Investor Relations Advisor. I take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy Diwali. Thank you very much. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Kemplas and Mar Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.